Hello and welcome to Unity Church of El Cajon. My name is Robert Bright. I'm the pastor here. And I'd like to welcome you to this midweek experience. Today we are talking about dreams. And it's Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, says that the importance of dreams was that they preceded our experience of the Holy Spirit and relating God's information to man. In the Bible, some dreams were divinely received and interpreted by the prophet or an important character, like John. His dream is what we now call the Book of Revelation. And others were divinely interpreted for another important person, like Joseph of the coat of many colors fame. He interpreted dreams for the Pharaoh, and Daniel did it for, the, for King Nebuchadnezzar. In our modern time, one common school dream analysis is defined through the works of Carl Jung. He was a protege of Sigmund Freud. Now, these two psychologists saw that our lives are driven by two primary contexts, the conscious and the unconscious. The conscious being the thoughts and motivations that we're aware of in our waking lives. Part of our practice as a true student is bringing things into awareness. The unconscious are the thought forms and motivations that come from a context that we're not aware of. Our dream life is one such context. Now, Jung believed that our conscious lives were individual experiences, and the unconscious was a universally connected experience. So the images and motivations that came from the unconscious were shared by all in the cosmos. He saw that the images that came from the unconscious as archetypes that were shared symbols and personifications of identity. Like ancient gods, like, you know, those in Greek mythology, they were archetypes invented by the collective and conscious of man who, through their dreams, they, they became legends and were guides that assisted us in the unfoldment, unfoldment of our own destinies. Now, I've always been interested in dreams. They've been a big part of my life ever since I can remember, and I've worked with them since a young age. During my graduate studies, I was privileged to work with a master teacher and facilitator of dream work. Jeremy Taylor has written several respected books on the subject and was, has devoted his entire career to facilitating dream circles where people kept dream journals and shared their dreams and others responded through a personalized understanding of that shared dream because it was a shared consciousness. You see, if dreams come through the universal consciousness, we may have insight into how another person's dream may inform our lives as well. Now, Jeremy established some powerful guidelines, and I'm going to share with them with you today. The first guideline, and I think this is a very important one, is that all dreams speak a universal language and come in the service of health and wholeness. You see, there is no such thing as a bad dream. I know that's hard to imagine. These are only dreams that sometimes take a dramatically negative form in order to grab your attention. Number two, only the dreamer can say with any certainty what meanings his or her dream may have. This certainty usually comes through the form of a wordless aha of recognition. Now this aha is a function of memory and is the only reliable touchstone of dream work. So when someone is working with you on your dream and they're interpreting it for themselves, you may get an aha from that interpretation because it is part of the shared unconsciousness. Now, there is no such thing as a dream with only one meaning. All dreams and dream images are overdetermined and have multiple meanings and layers of significance. This is pretty common to how unity and true students look at the Bible. The Bible doesn't have just one meaning. There are multiple layers of meaning within each Bible verse. Number four, no dream comes just to tell you what you already know. All dreams break new ground and invite you 
to new understandings and insights. Number five, when talking to others about dreams, it's both wise and polite to preface your remarks with words to the effect of, in my imagined version of the dream, and to keep this commentary in the first person as much as possible. This means that even relatively challenging comments can be made in such a way that the dreamer may actually be able to hear and internalize them. It can also become a profound psycho-spiritual discipline, like walking a mile in your neighbor's moccasins. Our dreams are filled with rich information from our psyches. Sometimes our deepest desires are expressed in dreams, and sometimes our deepest fears emerge. Dreams can offer a space where we meet others and we do emotional work to engage and heal. And each time I have a dream that I experience as disturbing, I'm reminded that all dreams come in the service of health and healing. Dreams are here to serve us. I'd like for us to take a moment as we go into a guided meditation. And during this time, let us close our eyes, much like we would do when we were asleep. And let us be aware of our breath. Let us be cons conscious of each inhalation and exhalation. As we are relaxing, let us imagine a time when we are sleeping. We are comfortable embraced by the blankets that give us warmth. Our head is supported by a comfortable pillow. There are images, perhaps a story that is unfolding in our minds. We welcome these images. We embrace the story as we know that we are part of divine order as we know that they are a part of divine order. They are sent to us by spirit to inform us, to give our attention, to assist us in growth. And as we breathe, we are conscious, aware of our breath. We give thanks for our dreams. We give thanks for the messages of spirit. We give thanks for a safe place to unravel the mysteries of our lives. As we continue in the awareness of our breath, a dream from our past appears. We see the images, we hear the sounds. We remember the activities. We remember how we felt. We make no judgment about the dream. We simply see it as a message from spirit a gift from our unconscious. And we give thanks for its appearance. We let go of it, knowing we can let go of it and come back to it at another time to explore it further. We give thanks to spirit. We give thanks for this opportunity. We give thanks for our dreams. Now we allow ourselves to begin to come back to this time and space continuum. We continue to be aware of our breath. 
we continue to be open to bringing into consciousness gifts from the unconscious. And as we open our eyes and we look around, we know where we're at. I want to thank you today for joining us. Perhaps you're interested in exploring your dreams. And if you are, I encourage you to begin a dream journal. Write down the images, the action, the people, if you can recognize them and identify them. Write down the feelings, whatever you can remember. Remember to immediately write this down after each sleep. You may be surprised what your dreams will reveal. There may be some hidden desires in there that you want to bring to life. Thank you for joining us today. And we invite you to leave a comment, like us on Facebook and YouTube. Stay in touch. We want you to know that we love you, we miss you, and we behold the Christ in you. God bless you, everyone. Amen. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.